evening guys this is Sam and I will be doing the free video for May 14th 2021 um, so I just finished recording the premium video for the folks in the gold room and uh, we, we typically look at uh, pretty much all world markets in that video by and large um, the recovery this week was really impressive um, you may not know this or maybe you do but on Tuesday of this week we actually saw the worst tick rating that's ever been recorded that includes all of COVID and that includes during the 2008 financial crisis. On this Tuesday, we actually had a tick rating in the market that was worse than any of those moments. Um, and then by, uh, by today, we actually recovered a lot of it and we actually closed extremely strong. Um, the signals going into next week aren't absolutely aligned. They're not perfect, but they are skewing bullish, uh, especially if you look at everything put together. Um, you know, international markets, the VIX, the dollar, things like that. Um, it all, as a collective, it all looks more bullish than not. So my bias is still going to be higher going into next week. Um, so I want to show you five stocks that I'm looking at um, briefly that I think can play very well and that have very good setups and are in the right parts of the market. And then at the very end, I'm going to talk to you about a little bit of a dynamic to look for because we actually could see rotation next week but at least uh, without further evidence we still want to stick with what's been working and then I'm going to give you the evidence or the the clue as to what to look for for the potential for rotation so the first one's gonna be caterpillar here I think the chart speaks for itself right what we're looking for is just um, you know a squeeze is it above the 21 and it's not overbought meaning it's not up here at 2 or 3 ATR um, I like Caterpillar going into next week. I think it plays well. Um, some of the China uh, stocks that I follow and the Chinese uh, markets that I follow also uh, bode well. And um, anytime that Caterpillar can have both a setup onto itself plus have the Asian markets cooperating, that tends to work very well here. So in the short term, I'm just looking for a retest back of the highs here which would be roughly around 245, 246. And then from there we can see if it can go higher. Um, the squeeze does support a break even higher than the all-time high, but just in the short term, it's a strong stock, strong setup, and uh, I would be looking for just a retest of the highs, <clears throat> leaving room for, for a little bit above the highs. Next up is going to be 3M. Um, so this one's a lot like Caterpillar. I think this one has a little bit more meat on the bone. Same exact story. It plays well with China. It's an industrial stock. It's got a good setup. It had a good pullback this week. So it was too hot last week when it was 2 and 3 ATR. You typically don't want to buy that. You can see here there's really not a lot of price action that happens there. And then when you get it, it dropped. Um, <clears throat> but if you can pick it up at the mean, it's a lot better, right? So I want to pick this up as close as possible to 200 as you know, if, if it does indeed pull back, I think that's a great entry. Anywhere around 200 to 201, I think is a fantastic entry. Uh, same thing as Caterpillar. You have the squeeze, full structure, and I think 3M here actually setting up for a potentially con a good strong continuation move because you have this uh, weekly cross of the 200 and the 21. So <clears throat> these two ideas are very similar. Um, if you like both, I wouldn't play both. They're the same thing. So if you like Caterpillar and you like 3M, just look at them on your own and see which one you like more. For myself, I think I'm going to play 3M um, going into next week just because it has a little bit more meat on the bone. And I think on this one, you can retest uh, back up here right around 209 to 208, which is where it would start to get a little bit overbought again. But uh, overall, very nice charts on both. And I don't think you can go wrong choosing either one. Uh, one trade that I was in, um, wow, it, uh, it's trading at 20 after hours. I really like this next trade. Um, so I was already in this. I started buying it last uh, yesterday, and then I did I did just flip it out today. Um, uh, but I will certainly get back in next week um, at some point. Ideally, I want to get it as close as possible to the moving averages. Uh, I got out pretty close to 20 today, but the setup is 100% intact. This is Goodyear Tire, and you're noticing kind of a theme, right? It's kind of the reflation trade, the reopening trade, things like that. Um, on Goodyear, I'm looking for uh, a little bit higher here, probably about 2% higher in about 2038. But the ultimate target here on Goodyear is right around 2164. So it is a nice size move here. It would be about 7, 6, 7% 7 to the upside. 
so not too bad. Uh, almost full alignment here. Um, you have everything else that we have on Caterpillar and 3M, but actually nominally stronger because you have the trend oscillator completely intact, where you have the green line over the red the entire time. That's extremely strong. It's not overbought. You're getting the squeeze triggering today, and um, good volume coming in yesterday as well. So I like this stock a lot. I did flatten this out, you know, full disclosure. I bought it at uh, right around 19. Mm, it was right around 19 is where I bought it, and I tried to flip it out at 20. So I will look to get back in on this uh, next week. And I think that if you like long-term holds, this is a, definitely a one to buy and hold because it's uh, it's so far off its highs. Next up is going to be uh, Academy. So this one's got a little bit of a different tenor. This one's kind of a more of a go-go Momo stock here uh, because it has high short interest, but I'm definitely going to be playing this. I already started uh, the position uh, small, but I'm going to be adding to it as it goes. And I, I started by shorting the $35 puts. So basically just be betting that <clears throat> into June, it's going to stay at 35 or above and those puts expire worthless. You can certainly play calls here. This is the most impulsive uh, setup that I'm going to bring you today because it's uh, it's got high short interest, it's got a great pattern, it's got a squeeze, it's near an all-time high. All these things tie together to really make a potent um, type of move here. So I'm going to be playing this one as well. I'm doing it through the short 35 puts. I certainly think you can buy calls and play it that way. And then lastly, a little bit of a speculative pick here but that I also like. Um, I started buying this um, a few days ago, and uh, I think this is going to go significantly higher here into the summer months. Uh, this is rig, it's Transocean, um, basically just a playoff of oil, which I think is going to get to about 77. And on rig here, I'm looking to play mostly this weekly squeeze. So you're going to have to give this one time, probably until the end of the summer. But I'm looking for at least 560 with the potential to get all the way up to about 650. So that'd be about a 50% move here in rig. Uh, the signal is right over here. It's the weekly squeeze um, and the fact that it's breaking out of this um, consolidation range. So you have this big consolidation range starting to break out of it. A little bit of a flag there. It's a little cup and handle thing going on there. Um, and I think this is going to go significantly higher. So this is obviously the most speculative pick that I've brought you. If you're conservative, don't play this. Play uh, something like Triple M or Caterpillar or any of the other four. But uh, if you like to kind of buy something and be able to hold it for a few months and see it potentially go up 50%, I think Rig offers that opportunity. So going back to the beginning of the video, I, I told you to leave an open mind for uh, potential rotation. Now tech has been beaten up. Nobody wants tech anymore. And that's because of the bond market. Now I'm seeing a dynamic here in bonds that could be very interesting. And it's not what anyone expects, which makes me think, the probability that it happens is not zero, right? Because when everybody expects something, that's when it doesn't happen. And when nobody expects something, that's when that happens. So here on TNX, this is the 10 year interest rate. Keep in mind that if this goes up, tech stocks will sell off. They do not like this. Um, other stocks do like it, but tech does not like it. The path of least resistance here is up. You have an uptrend. You have a little bit of a kind of a flagging pattern here into support. And then you have the push off with a clearly defined upward bias to your squeeze. <clears throat> That's what everybody sees. And the narrative is that this is going to go directly higher. However, I do want you to leave an open mind um, for the potential that based on this sell signal that actually printed right here intraday, that this actually, this squeeze here that's going up, actually does this and rolls back lower and actually fires short. Now, keep in mind, the path of least resistance here is up. And you should view this chart as a bullish chart, but everyone's looking at it that way. So just leave an open mind going into next week that if this chart actually breaks the, the daily 21 right around 16.2 and actually does this, this is going to cause a massive rotation in the market away from um, basically the stocks that we just looked at, like the industrials, and back into tech. So leave an open mind for that. No one's talking about it, probably for good reason, because the path of least resistance is higher here. And that would still imply that tech is no, you don't touch tech. But if you start to see this chart trade below 16.2, then understand that the rotation back into tech is going to be very strong. We could see a huge short squeeze in tech, and, uh, and that would be the play. <clears throat> so to simplify what I just said, 
if TNX is above 16.2, don't play tech. If, six, if TNX goes below 16.2, we could see a huge move in tech. Leave an open mind and, um, and uh, be prepared for either outcome. So that's, uh, that's what we wanted to show you guys. I think we showed you five stocks today, which is a little bit more than we usually cover, but uh, all good names. Um, and also just uh, keep in mind the dynamic that we just talked, around, talked about on bonds and be prepared for it, right? Have an open mind that maybe bonds actually in the short term break lower and that pushes tech higher. However, also understand that the path of least resistance is in bonds, or excuse me, the path of least resistance in bonds is higher. And in the event that that happens, Caterpillar, 3M, GT, Goodyear, and Rig really stand to benefit from all that. All right, guys, that's my time. I hope this was helpful. If you like what we put out there, make sure that you leave us a, a like or a dislike. Just register either a thumbs up or a thumbs down to help us out with the algorithm. Even a thumbs down helps us out. So, you know, go ahead and click that thumbs down if that's what you feel. If that's, if that's what's in your heart, go ahead and click the thumbs down. Click the thumbs up. Just let us know you're here. Ideally, leave us a comment. Leave us a question as well. Help us out with the algorithm. Help us... Uh, uh, build up our subscriber base a little bit here on YouTube and for to do that we need you to help us with the algorithm So the algorithm loves likes and dislikes and comments So if you like our stuff guys take a minute here before you click off the video to leave us one of those um, Before you uh, before you go elsewhere on the YouTube All right guys, that's my time. I hope this was helpful. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday Cheers. Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me 